What is going on guys? Dr. D here bringing you a war recap from our most recent war in One Hive Invicta. Now this was um, a, a bit of a mix-up. It seems that last Friday everybody had arranged wars and everybody was missing and maybe this was uh, Supercell's one last uh, chance to mess with our uh, arranged wars but uh, before the new update drops. However, um, we had an arranged war set up with uh, South Raiders and we've missed with them, I, I think, maybe this was our first miss, but I was thinking we had two misses, two misses with South Raiders. At any rate, we missed with them, um, and uh, a little bummed out, we were scrambling then to try and find another arranged war. We got one lined up, missed with them too. Uh, fortunately though, we did actually hit with um, another great clan, one of the best clans out there, and that is Above and Beyond. Um, this was actually a, a pretty special war for me because when I first came into um, One Hive Invicta, actually it was my second war in. My first war in, we w actually warred with 2.0, um, but my second war in was against Above and Beyond, and they beat us by less than 1%. And so we were looking for some revenge, and uh, boy, we definitely got it. Um, props to the guys over at Above and Beyond. We actually had um, a bit of an advantage. I'll talk about more when we flip over to the war statistics. Um, but uh, before we do that, let's have a look at our six packs, because boy, did our guys bring it when it came to uh, this war. So as you can see here, um, 12 six packs. Uh, from our guys, there, there were 40 of us in there, um, and, and so over a fourth of the clan got six packs. Very impressive. Um, a lot of guys with, uh, you know, um, five stars with, with a triple and then uh, a high percentage two star, which really helps, actually. It, it helps for planning, and we, we do a lot of coordination to make sure that um, the, the next person that steps in for that cleanup attack is able to pick up that uh, third star. Um, at any rate, uh, if we, we look down here, um, a lot of fresh triples. We had a couple of bully attacks, but um, number number four there, Yo-Yo, we're going to watch this. This is a really impressive hit. Um, he tripled uh, their number one base. Um, Tom, the terrible, um, pulled off a, a, a six-pack um, on, on the, the top two Town Hall 9s. Tom is a, Tom's a 9.5. Um, as we, we move down, we've you know, our, our, our Town Hall 9s just rocked this war, uh, as did our 10s. In fact, um, you'll see when we get over to the war, um, our 10s two-starred every single Town Hall 11, um, I, I believe, in five hits when there were four Town Hall 11s, uh, which gives our, our Town Hall 11s an opportunity to go in and work on triples there. But uh, we cleared all of their uh, 10s, all of their 9s, and then they had four um, Town Hall 11s, and we were able to clear one. All right, so without any further ado, let's hop over and look at the war statistics. So here are the basic war statistics. You can see that we got uh, 37 uh, triples. Um, we only left three bases open, and those were all Town Hall 11s. Uh, they had 27 triples. Uh, damage was 96.65% to 93.2%. We have a look at the bases here. Now, we did have a bit of an advantage. So we had a 9.5 and a 10 um, more than what they had. Uh, however, um, we were actually able to clear all of their 9s, except the top two, which we blocked out um, for, for bullies, with our 9s. And we even had 9s left over for some scouts. On the other side, they, they struggled with our higher bases. Um, they did a pretty good job on our 10s, left a couple of 10s open. Um, but left several of our nines open. And so if we scroll through here, I believe there was six, six town hall nines open. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven. So seven town hall nines that were left open and, um, several of these town hall nines actually had to get cleared by, um, tens. So there was one, uh, two, three, or I think that's it. Um, I think four of our Town Hall 9s required uh, 10 hits. So um, overall score 117 to 105. On the other side here, you'll see uh, we actually um, tripled the uh, number one base. Um, Yo-Yo did that. We'll watch that attack. It was a mass minor. 
Um, we had a, a, a number of, we, we cleared all of the tens and all of the nines, and then uh, one of the elevens. Um, we have a couple of uh, 10v10 triples that I will show you, um, and then we're going to watch uh, some of the nines. Um, but overall, really, really great war. Like I said, um, I was excited to match up with these guys. It was, um, you know, <laughs> uh, it's, it's kind of a bummer when you have a, a, a planned war um, and then you don't match, um, but uh, that gets offset when you match a group like Above and Beyond. And so uh, we were excited, uh, we, we prepared, and we really brought it to them. So let's have a look here, um, starting with our first attack. And we're going to look at uh, Bellona. And so uh, Bella has uh, a couple of uh, different accounts that she uses here. This is her Town Hall 9. Um, she's coming in with, uh, as you can see, it's a bolo uh it's it's going to be two two golems uh, a couple of hounds and you you can tell that right here right next to that air sweeper is a great spot for a jump gives her access to a ton of the base half the base gives her access to that queen chamber which is incredibly important if you're doing an air attack um, in come the bowlers a nice wide funnel still start to get one walk on of it over there but he does wind up pulling back in Jump spell is down. It's a perfectly placed jump spell. Rage is down. And it is game time. So, poison comes down. There goes uh, two ADs. Um, <clears throat> heal spell probably should have been over a little bit uh, where those bombs are. But I think this is a fresh hit. But she didn't know where the bombs were. So, uh, at any rate, a um, couple of ADs down. The queen is still up at this point. Not for long. There goes the queen. There goes one more AD. Hounds do pop, or at least one of them pops, I'm pretty sure. And there we go. That is it. It is GG at this point. We'll speed it up just a little bit. And... Last few defenses, and it is just cleanup from this point out. Three stars in the bag. Nice job, Bella. All right. Who do we have next? Um, number 36. And this was um, HB. So uh, I thought this was a really cool attack. It's got everything going on. So she's going to start with a queen walk up at the top. She's going to use this to, to clear out a little bit of the side here. It's actually very smart because eventually she's going to be bringing in bowlers. So she's setting the one half of her funnel right now. Puts a wizard up there. And um, you'll see here in a bit, it's very important that she set that, that funnel because her, her bowlers do decide to go for a stroll. Um, pulls the uh, CC. We've got a uh, drag and a couple of loons. Um, pops the rage there. And she's going to kill the CC. We'll speed it up for a second here. She's setting her funnel over there to get ready for this ground attack. And here comes the ground portion. So she's got her queen walk going. Now she's coming in with her um, kill squad on the ground portion. Speed that up just a little bit. We bust in, in comes the bowlers, and the bowlers see some junk over there and decide, hey, let's go over there. Um, <laughs> so some of the bowlers go in like they're supposed to, um, three of them do not, so two in, three out. Fortunately, though, she cleared that side out. The king's going to beat through the wall here for a little bit, and then they're in, and everything is just fine. Uh, bowlers have cleared out um, a good half of the base at this point through that top half. Um, the jump is down, and now it's all about getting rid of that last AD. Or, or the second to the last. Gets that one AD. The hound goes to the final AD like it's supposed to. Um, only eight loons on this attack. So it's, it, I mean, it was light, but it was. She, she knew that if she got deep enough, all she would need was 
a little bit for that back end and that final AD. And that is it. We'll speed this up a little bit. But that is two stars in the bag. The Hound pops right at the end to help with cleanup. And very nice job, HV. All right, who do we have next? Ah, Mitch. Number 29. I wish I could show you guys all of the. There were so many just really, really stellar attacks here. Um, part of what I like to do is try and find uh, attacks that we don't see as much, and this one I haven't seen in quite a while. So you've got that big open center, and when those big open centers happen, the, that dead space bases as they call them, then it's a great opportunity for an avalanche. And so you can see Mitch comes in with 20 wizards, 5 golems. He's going to break in here. Oh, jump. I'm sorry. So he jumps in here, and the you know, the key to doing this avalanche is initially you've got to set a really wide funnel so that you can get your heroes to go in there with them. And if you can get your heroes in there with those golems tanking, it's it's uh, usually going to be a GG on a base like this, at least. Um, at any rate, king and queen are both in there. Um, a couple of wizards are in there. Here comes the next golem. These golems are just tanking beautifully. Next golem comes in over on the side. Wall breakers don't quite go where he wants them to go, unfortunately. Uh, but golem goes in there. The other golem has jumped to the center. And with no defenses now, it's they're starting to move on. The, that, that top golem is actually just going to get trapped where it's at. Um, but we move up to the 12 o'clock, wall breaks in, brings another golem, he's got a jump down. He's going to have one jump left. You can see that, unfortunately, that last jump is going to be used there, and he's not going to have a jump for that final box, which is fine. He planned this, and that's why he's got those back-end hogs. There's only two hogs, but as long as those golems are distracting everything, two hogs is more than enough. So, here comes the final golem. Well... The second of the final golem, because you still got that one stuck in that box over at 3 o'clock. And as soon as these things start tanking, there we go. Here comes the hogs. Can knock out these last few defenses. Wizards are down to start cleaning up. Queen takes out the archer tower. And that is it. Three stars in the bag. Very nice job. All right. Next, we have Jamie. So uh, I usually try to not show more than one of the same attack. I'm going to show two blue velers here. Uh, this is Jamie's blue wheeler. She's really, really good at this. She really understands this well. And when you talk to her about it, she says that um, the, the idea, right, is, is really to kind of provide heals, heal for that queen, heal for the bowlers that are going to start over here on the on the south end at, at 6 o'clock, and then to keep those um, valves healed up throughout. And so you see in her composition, she's got three spells, three heal spells. Um, we're going to look at another one in which uh, Clutch decides to, to in, in Clutch I think does this twice, but takes more, more rage and only one heal. Um, at any rate, uh, I think that Clutch oftentimes meets up with, with those healers and uh, Jamie doesn't. So she keeps these Valks going, tries to keep the edges clear to keep them inside that base and keep them under heal as much as possible. And so they're under heal right there. And as they move into the next portion of the base, still under heal. Queen is, is really taking her time over there. Uh, bowlers are still up, working their way down, down to the edge of the base. Um, Valks go in. Just got a couple of point defenses left that the Valks need to take care of. And once they do, it's basically game over. 
There goes one right there. Now, unfortunately, the Valks are out of heal and they're, they're all going to get killed here. But heroes are able to finish this off. Oh, maybe she's got one Valk left there, it looks like. Uh, pops the ability there. And in, Wizards are on the back end doing some cleanup. I uh, got a Troll Tesla over there. But that is it. It is GG. Nice job. Three stars in the bag. Good job, Jamie. Uh, what do we have next? Lee. Lee, like I said, also had a six-pack. Uh, Jamie had a six-pack. Mitch had a six-pack. Uh, lots of six-packs. In fact, uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Eleven people with six-packs in this war. Uh, but Lee was on number 24. I really struggled to show... The, he had two really amazing attacks. Um, his other attack had almost 40 hogs. It was a mass hog. Um, so what he's doing here, uh, Queen Lock, he's pulling out the CC. Um, he's going to poison it, just to kind of take care of things right here. And we'll speed it up just a little bit through this. When the queen comes through, he's going to eventually rage that queen or rage those healers up. There we go. Takes out the king, takes out the queen. He has a wall breaker fail up there. So he drops his king and lets the king kind of beat through the wall here. And once that king gets in, <laughs> eventually, there we go. Bowlers come down, right? Eh? Um, gets a jump down and gets the uh, baby dragon up there, um, setting the edge to try and keep those bowlers inside. It doesn't work. Um, the bowlers decide to go walking around. That's all right. He's got at least a couple of bowlers in there. Whoops. And another jump goes down. So at this point, no more spells, right? But in with the hogs on the back end. Doesn't matter. So uh, similar to what we saw with um, HB, where there was an awful lot of stuff going on, a ground attack and an air attack, it's, um, you know, a, a, a go-ho, a go, a, a hobo, I guess. Um, with a shattered entry instead of a stoned entry and utilizing the queen as and, and the baby dragon as a way to funnel the um, golems into the center there. Really, really nice attack. Lots of cleanup troops at the end here. Great job, Lee. Three stars in the bag. There we go. All right. You know, it just wouldn't be an Invicta War if we didn't have somebody doing a very cool drag attack. And that's what we've got here from Paragon Hunter, PH. He's going to Zap Quake two of these ADs. Drops his BK down and wall breaks in to take out the Queen right away. Now no, notice both of those Expos are on ground. And all of these ADs were very accessible. This is a little bit scary because that Hound pops really quickly. That's a max Hound. And he has no spells, an AD, and a Tesla farm right there. Unfortunately, um, all of his drags are very fresh. And all of them funnel straight to that spot. So, uh, crushes that huge, huge HP area. Or DPS area. My bad. And, and after that, I mean, he's got two point defenses out there right now that can hit dragons, you know, two archer towers. I mean, there's some wizard towers, but they don't do that much um, damage to dragons. And you see these dragons on the down here at the um, kind of 8 o'clock are going to tear up one of those real quickly. And that is it. We're going to speed it up here. But, uh, yeah, pushes through there very quickly. There goes one Archer Tower, and there goes the Wizard Tower, and that's it. Done. Fast forward. Three stars in the bag. Very nice job, PH. All right. Um, so let's go and check out an attack by Clutch. Clutch is the fearless leader of Swarm. Um, over here helping out. Uh, he's, he's got a... He's a 
a regular in Invicta with this account too. So um, Clutch is bringing a different type of blue velar. Now when I first saw this base, I felt like it was a bit too compact to do a, a blue velar on. Um, you'll notice Jamie's base was very, very spread out. Um, but the way that this has this line of defenses over here and the line of defenses over here, it makes for an easy funnel down both sides and then you can rip those valves right up the middle. And that's exactly what's going to happen here. So he's setting the funnel and at this point it is set. The bowlers are down. The queen is about to kill the enemy king. There it goes. Bowlers are working their way down the side of the base. And in go the Valks. And the Valks wind up falling in with the healers that the queen was using. Um, so this makes that rage a great option because I, I said it a lot. When you've got healers underneath rage and your troops underneath rage, it's really like having two spells, a rage for your troops and an additional heal spell because those healers under rage are just monsters. Um, at any rate, he's pushed all the way through the base at this point. Um, all that's left is the, the few defenses up there on the top. He's got uh, two point defenses. Oh, three point defenses. I guess there's an, an archer tower over there that the Valks are about to get. They can get ripped through that wall. Um, and that's it. So we're going to speed this up a little bit as they work their way around the base. Uh, pops the king's ability there. Um, bowlers come around, and that is it. It is three stars in the bag. Nice job, Clutch. Clutch had a six-pack this war as well. All right. Um... Heartless on number 18. So this is the last Town Hall 9 that we're going to watch. And Heartless is really, um, he's got this attack down. I felt like it kind of went a little bit sideways on him here. He, he's coming in with a Vabby attack. So he's got Valks and he's got Baby Dragons. Um, and when you've got this big open spot and an easy, an easy jump to, to access three different air defenses, uh, which is what you've actually got right here here, then a Vabby is a very nice option. Um, at any rate, he's coming in with a Queen Walk. He's trying to set this funnel so that his Valks don't go all over the place. Um, and as soon as that Town Hall is down, the funnel is set and in with his Valks. Uh, Valks go ripping in. And you're going to see here, unfortunately, the Valks don't get a single one of those air defenses. You're going to get kind of eaten up here a little bit. They get in there, they, they get the CC, almost get the CC, and they're gone. The Valks are just gone at this point. It's got to be a scary moment, but uh, he hangs in there. Um, there goes uh, two of the air defenses now are gone, um, all thanks to these bowlers. Uh, enemy queen is about to be gone, and then his queen is just apparently a lot smarter than my queen. Because she decides to hop this fence, a kind of a poorly placed wall there, uh, not long enough to keep or wide enough to keep the queen out. Um, at any rate, uh, queen does wind up dying, and this is where things get a little bit hairy because he's got baby dragons, one, two, three, four, five out there, six out there, um, and one in the bag. And a king who's got a heal on him, but still, uh, he knows that his only real hope at this point is getting the king to bust through that wall. So he starts setting the baby dragons up there on the top, knowing he's going to lose some to this uh, air defense, but hoping that he can set a funnel to get the king in there. This is a great example of adjusting on the fly. Does get that funnel set. And he's holding that one baby dragon in the back there. So... The king finally gets that air defense down, but with its last shot, it takes out his last healer. So now the king is beating on this wall while the expo is going crazy. Um, he's got two baby dragons over there. One of them has almost no health, or at least by the time it gets over 
to the expo, it's going to have almost no health. So the one on the right there is almost dead, or the one on the left. And the expo is full health. The expo starts pounding on this one on the right, uh, and something really cool is about to happen. Because that one dies, and as soon as it dies, rage, and just a couple of spits, and that baby dragon takes it down, and it is tree stars in the bag. Nice adjustment, and nice job, Heartless. Love the attack. All right, now we get into the big dogs. Um, Gino had one of the coolest 10v10 triples I've seen in a while. What we've been seeing at Town Hall 10, almost every attack, is some sort of a mass miner or um, occasionally a, a mass bowler attack, more commonly miners right now. Um, just incidentally, uh, the update is going to drop any day now, and when it does, I'm told that mass miners are not going to do the things that they've been doing in the past. At any rate, um, Gino comes in here, and if you look at his army composition, you've got two golems, you've got three uh, hounds, there's a, there's a max hound in the CC, and so we're, we're doing uh, uh, this is we're doing the Lalo. So two golems down, start setting the funnel. Um, notice the spell selection there. He's got a jump, he's got a rage, he's got a freeze, and he's got five um, hastes. And so the, the goal here is that with the kill squad, he wants to get those two air defenses, the CC, the enemy queen, and those two ADs. And it's, it's a pretty small kill squad for all that work. I mean, we're talking about a couple of wizards, two golems, a king and a queen. But he gets it. And with the last shot of that queen, well, not the last shot, but with a shot of the queen, pop, down goes that air defense. So two air defenses left. In come a whole load of loons. And more baby dragon, or I mean, uh, hounds. So he's got his hounds on there. He freezes. It's a perfect freeze with hastes all around. That air defense is gone. He's hasting over, speeding over to it. He's going to drop last haste right here. Bam. Gone. And he's got lots of loons left. He's still got two in the bag for the back end here. And you see he's got two air targeting defenses yet. He's got one Tesla and one Archer Tower. And just as that Tesla and Archer Tower start targeting his loons, he drops those two fresh loons. And it is GG. Excellent job. Very nice attack, Gino. It is just clean up at this point. Three stars in the bag. Nice job. All right, um, let's have a look at Friendly, another 10v10. Friendly just got his heroes up to 40-40, and I remember him as a brand new 9.5 when I first came into Invicta with 30-30 heroes, and he's been pushing hard, and here we go. So, um, the goals here, right, you can see he's got uh, miners and bowlers, and so he's going to bring in the bowlers initially, and you have uh, just a couple of goals with these bowlers. You want to get one of those um, Inferno Towers, you want to kill the CC, and you want to get at least one, if not two, of the Expos. I'm pretty sure he gets one Expo, but doesn't get that other one. Uh, we'll see here. Uh, he does get the, get the AQ, which is good, gets the Enemy Queen. And as he hits those benchmarks, in come the miners from 1 o'clock. And they just are ripping through the base. Down with the poison spell, because some skellies popped. A couple of hogs come over to take out this air defense, or I mean uh, archer tower. Heal. 
And now he has a funnel set to push his miners straight to that Inferno Tower. Which he does. Drops a second heal. But loses those miners that were on that Inferno Tower anyway. Loses a couple of miners there to a Spring Trap. You can see his queen is down there. She hasn't even used her ability yet. Eventually she's going to pop her ability, but it, it, it is, uh, yeah, so, so clutch here. Myers taking out the last few point defenses. There we go. All that's left is an Archer Tower. Pops the ability. Archer Tower's gone. And that's it. It is tree stars in the bag. Nice job. All right. And last, but definitely not least, Yo-Yo, our number four, our lowest Town Hall 11, came in for a three-star attempt on their number one. And so, he's going to set the edge. Um, this is not your, your traditional kind of uh, boner attack, but what he does is he clears the sides and then will draw a full line of mass miners right there. Comes straight down the middle, starts them on either side to funnel them towards the center. You can see his king and queen have already created a funnel. And just based on the setup of this base, it's kind of a natural funnel straight to the town hall and to the Eagle Artillery. Got heels down. Now this is what's crazy. Um, king is dead at this point. Pretty soon here, that Grand Warden goes, and it doesn't take long for that Queen to go. Town Hall is down now, though. Uh, Eagle Artillery is down. And there goes the Queen. So it's looking kind of scary at this point. He has no air-targeting troops. All he's got are Miners. And he's out of spells. And his Miners all have minions out of the CC on them. And these minions are following his miners everywhere that they go. Now, fortunately, the way that the AI is set up, once those miners go underground, the minions just stop and wait for them to pop back up. And so, if they travel far enough, then the minions have a ways to go before they actually can find the miners again. Um, meaning they can't deal a ton of damage if the miners are able to travel a bit of distance. Now, initially, they're not. You can see they're at four buildings here that are all pumped up. But as soon as they take these out, some distance there. Even more distance to the next one. And now is where they make their money. And that is it. Oh, we've got a Tesla Tower over there. And that's it. Three stars in the bag. Nice job, Yo-Yo. Great way to finish off our war. So... Um, that is it. I hope you guys enjoyed those recaps. Um, please leave us comments in the uh, comment section. And until next time, this is Dr. D from Invictus signing off.